Hi guys, I'm Redneck Computer Geek and welcome to my channel. Most of the time this channel is things like lawn tractor modification, mud mowers, and a gas powered power wheel along with a few other things. Every once in a while I like to talk about the tools that I use around the house. Um, in this case, when I originally bought this little 14 inch pooling, it was because I was living on a place that had 20 acres worth of land. I don't have that much acreage. Now I just basically do cleanup. On top of that, ethanol that's in our gas is killing all the carburetors if they sit. So the little saw only got used about once a year and the ethanol killed it. So I got hunting around for saws and I decided that at this point, let's try an electric saw. So for today's review, We have a Remington Limb Trim electric saw. It is an 8 amp saw. Um, I've never used an electric saw, but we're going to bust this one out today and play around with it. We're also going to try a couple of other things that may be on your mind. Now, this particular saw is an 8 amp saw for draw, which is a decent amount of draw. So, what we have here right now is we have this line here, which is coming right directly out of my garage. It's on a dedicated 20 amp circuit, which is what I power my Hobart 140 welder off of. And we're gonna run it off that. We've got a couple of pieces of white birch. We've also got a white birch stump that is about yay big around. And we're gonna see what it'll do cutting that off. The other side to this is a lot of people have said, well, it's an electric saw. It doesn't do you much good in the middle of a power outage during a storm during something like that. So, for the heck of it, this is an 8 amp drawing saw. I have a $99 Harbor Freight generator. Now, the problem is the Harbor Freight generator has a very blatant warning sticker on it that says 6.5 amp max. I'm one for breaking things. So, what we're going to do, we're going to unbox this, do a video on what's inside the box. These are about 50 bucks on Amazon. I will include a link down in the description. We're going to unbox it, then we're going to play with it. So here we go. All right, so the first thing you'll notice about the box when you start looking at it is obviously it was made to open from this side. So we're going to pop this open and pop the other end open. There we go. Alright, the first thing you find is a really thick set of directions. I'm quite amazed actually. And after that, we have the saw. Very small teeth on the saw. It's for limbing anyway, so really wasn't expecting too aggressive. I'll pass this by the camera. So, well, that seems to be it. So we have a saw. We have some directions. Apparently that's it. Well, I guess for 50 bucks you can't expect them to include the uh, bar and chain oil right off the bat. So, the bar and chain oil ad is right here. Very chintzy rubber cap. Easy to break, I would bet. And I guess we're going to top it off. Well, that certainly didn't take very much. That's going to be good to note in long-term use that the reservoir for the bar and chain oil is probably about half the size it was on my old pool in 14. That really didn't take very much at all. So, 
at this point, looks like we got a safety switch and we got a trigger. That's about it. It's pretty simple. Um, feeling wise, it's really not heavy. Like I, I could probably limb like this if I wanted to, but you really shouldn't be limbing with just this. You should be holding up here. Um, there is no bump on the chain. There's no chain lock or anything. There's no safety mechanism at all. Um, the grip down here for when you cut in is plastic. Definitely going to wear off fast. It does have a chain adjuster of types, but yeah, there's no wrench that came with it. So, yeah, for 50 bucks, they skipped out as, just as much as possible. Another thing to note is it doesn't have a ground plug. It just has the two. With that note, let's get testing. I'm gonna throw a piece of white birch across here. We're gonna cut off a couple of cookies and see how long it takes. All right, so here we are. We're on our yellow cord, so that means we're on the garage circuit. We've got a 20 amp hookup here. Let's see what happens. That was pretty good. One more. This time we're gonna go through this blatant knot here, see what happens. That's pretty good. Alright, so limbing out old wood. As you can see, this is dry. It's last year's cut. I use it for burning in my fire pit. Um, so that came out good. So, at this point, I'm going to flip the camera around. We're going to take a look at a much larger stump that's going to test the limits of the saw. Okay, so for this next test, we've got this stump here. And if you, want, if you look, the saw blade is literally just barely the edge of it. So... This is the biggest possible thing you could probably try and cut with this saw. We're going to see whether we can get a clean cut straight through it and go from there. 
That's what warranties are for, right? Tool testing. Okay, well, that was rather messy. Oh, we didn't quite make it through, actually. Set the saw over on main mud mower. Oh, we had a slight bit. We didn't quite make it through. That cut is anything but smooth. The, the blade is just, the saw chain is just not spinning fast enough to get a smooth cut. So you're never going to get a good finish with it. The motor is... You can feel that it's heating up. It's lukewarm. I bet you could probably do another two or three cuts before it got too warm. That's not bad. You know what? Let's try another one. Here we go. Okay, one complaint I am going to make about the saw right now is that instead of throwing the chips out through the bottom, it throws them out through the top. And so every once in a while you catch one coming right directly back at you off the chain. Very uncomfortable, not cool. I don't know whether it's a design flaw or what or whether it's the angle I'm cutting at, but the fact that all the chips are coming out the top instead of going out the bottom, not very impressive. Also on that statement, you can see the whole bottom is filled with chips. So. Yeah, I'm going to assume that's a design flaw. Kind of not impressed with that. But, anyways, that cookie there I was a little more aggressive with, and that definitely came out really nice. The other one, you can see the choppy cut. This one here is a little bit nicer. It's not as good as a gas saw is ever going to go, but it is what it is. The motor. No real significant heat. I mean, I can feel enough that I know that it's working, but yeah, I bet I could make at least three or four more cuts before I'd be worried. The amount of oil used? Practically zilch. So, I'm going to keep using this. I'm going to throw the uh, I'm going to throw the generator probably on the back of main mud mower and drive it around, do some trimming on my property. Put it through its paces. I might do a follow-up review at the end of the summer. Have fun guys. Hope you enjoyed the review. Make sure to buy some bar and chain oil if you're going to get one of these cuz it doesn't come with it and there's no wrenches for the front. Supposedly, the bar and chain is an Oregon bar and chain, so it should interchange with just about anything you can buy at Walmart, and I'll include all the links down below. Have fun, guys.